And we're on grid with the stock 140s. We're waiting for one ride to come round at the moment. A little bit of a late comer to the uh, grid. But he's making a bit of a shortcut through. Um, gonna try and get a quick word with Daniel Underwood. Good friend of mine. <laughs> it's been a good it's been a good season, hasn't it, mate? You know, you know, it's all been a big group, you know, I know you're very popular on the social media, I know Sharon is watching and Cheering you on. Have you got any messages or any, anything to say to people watching at home? Uh, thanks to Total um, Limited for supporting me for the year. Uh, and it's nice to see all you guys again, mate. That's all that matters. <laughs> I love you to bits, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll speak to you in a bit. Uh, thanks, Dan, on the grid. 27 bikes on this one then. And they're away. And it's Danny Underwood who leads them away, and I believe he's been able to hold on to his pole position there as they come through the corner. They all get through cleanly by the looks of it as they head up the hill for Christmas Corner for the first time. But look at James Nagy oh, as I well. Uh, Nagy's gone to the... I think Underwood's down in second place now okay, on, that, on the so end of the first corner. Not the dream start there from our leader. One of the bikes there having difficulties getting away on the grid, but now underway, I'm glad to say. So Underwood fighting back. Those leaders using all of the curve through Zulu, has to be said. And Underwood starts to put the pressure on our race leader. Yeah, I agree. I think that is Nagy, isn't it? I think uh, so, yeah. Well, potentially. Certainly a driver with uh, rider with a teen's oh, number. Oh, on the change for the lead oh. there. Great move. Back Underwood, to the head of the field goes Underwood. That was lovely. Underwood got the undercut, as it were, and was able to drive up the inside or even ride. I will get the hang of it eventually, honest folks, as they head up once more up the hill. And challenge here for second place. I think that's Keir Armstrong who's involved in that. Looks like Armstrong. It's uh, just trying to call the numbers. Oh, a bit uh, of a shake there. I think that was Armstrong in second now, starting to put Underwood under some pressure. And to use another word with lots of syllables, very opportunistic move there from uh, Danny Underwood on the exit of the boot. Yeah, fantastic half stuff. A gap. Good race craft. 52. To see that one there. So we'll just confirm who that is in second place. Number 52 on the machine. And I hope that's not another one of our mystery riders. Let's hope not. It's, uh, <laughs> I haven't got the, uh, the name and fortune. Maybe one of our wildcard riders possibly. But Danny Underwood. Yeah, under some pressure. That. Yeah. But so far holding, uh, holding his own there. Dealing with the pressure well. But, but the run up to Christmas, oh, good move for 52 to take the lead from Underwood. Yeah, the 52 rider there got good drive through turns one and two. And that how it is, how you do it towards Christmas corners. Again, it's all in that second corner quite often to line the pass up. It's uh, one that you have to really work towards. Yeah, absolutely. And that process begins coming out of the final corner, or even coming out the second part of the boot, because it's such a flowing section of track all the way up the hill to uh, Christmas corner. Uh, it really is all about stringing it together, which I think that's part of the challenge, that, which is why so many riders enjoy this circuit. Uh, but beautiful move for the lead of the race. And now Underwood is going to be trying his best to stay on terms and even beat the terms of this lead 52 rider. James Nagy still in third place. Keir Armstrong fourth, Stuart Kay fifth. Chris Edwards in sixth, seventh is Daniel Pearson. Aaron Clark has just got past Tom Salmon for uh, eighth place. And James Lewis rounds out your top ten as it stands at the moment. Seven laps to go. And uh, Oh, look at uh, Underwood now starting to put the pressure on the race leader. Now you saw there the positioning for Zulu. That's something that you can, can really only do on a bike or be that aggressive Definitely. and go try the manoeuvre in, in, in Zulus on a bike like that. So an additional opportunity, uh, if you like, for overtaking. So and Underwood losing the advantage of out to the into the final few corners. Now this is where it can be interesting sometimes when a rider takes the lead early on. Well just see what Underwood does now because if a rider gets some good lines, quite often they'll see that the, the deposed leader just start to study that rider in front, see what lines they're using, perhaps seeing where they can do better. And Underwood actually is living with the race leader at the moment. Yeah, I have to say, you. one thing that I think we should mention is you'll note some of the, the, the riders will use quite a bit of runoff on the final corner and the runoff of turn two. Generally speaking, uh, Clark's of course happy for, for, mm. for people to do that. That's sort of a sort of ex accepted thing, if you like, around Wilton Mill, that uh, the runoff can be used within reason. Mm. 
uh, we should clarify. Uh, those who haven't been to Wilton Mill for years may remember that it used to be loose wood chippings on the exit of the final <laughs> corner, so you wouldn't have had such, uh, been able to take such liberties. But uh, these days, uh, riders and indeed drivers in other forms of racing uh, can, generally speaking, use quite a bit of those runoffs before they'll attract and the attention. And one thing I would say, actually, Howard, you'll know about this as well, of course, is when the camera cuts back to that final corner, that, that uh, runoff, that gravel, that, that rumble strip on the edge of the track, yes. it's um, it's very... You, you know about it. You know about you it. You know yeah, about so it, absolutely. Uh, as we can see here, this looks like the 77 of Daniel Pearson and Chris Edwards negotiating a position there up at Christmas Corner. If so, that would be over sixth position. One thing actually don't see about the... Uh, Point of for the winter series, which should be starting soon. I think the main port of will be uh, Matt Pearson. I don't know exactly the dates. We are expecting some good numbers, I'd imagine. I commentated live on the, the winter series last year. And it was a good turnout of riders, people looking to keep their finger in over the, the winter, you might say. So we look forward to that one. Let's see how Underwood gets on as we go up towards Christmas Corner. This little midfield battle taking place as well. And oh, that's number 12 and 65. One of our battles just on the edge of the top 10, I think. Keir Armstrong in there. Absolutely. And indeed, actually, yes. Is it, is it a 12 there. or is it 11? It says 12 on the bike, but I'm... I think that might that, be... Is that James Nagy? Nagy possibly, yeah, yeah. I, I'd agree with that. I think a uh, slight, uh, slight difference there between what's on the bike and what's on the timing screens in front of us. So this then would be the battle yeah. over third place between Nagy and Keir Armstrong. Both riders... Uh, going oh, well, and that indeed is the actually, checkered yeah, so flag. My goodness, uh, is it? Oh, time flies when one's having fun, Definitely, but uh, yeah. that doesn't tally with what's on timing either. Because <laughs> uh, according to timing, we have three laps to go. So, um, uh, in which case, uh, <laughs> congratulations to the rider off 52. Well, that caught us unaware, so... That caught us unaware. So doubtless for the riders. <laughs> it seems a bit strange. Look at this for a yeah, picture postcard. I think oh, that's the end one in the lovely. background, believe it or not. But a uh, lovely aut autumnal day. Myself, autumn's not my favourite month because it's all coming to an end, really. But uh, it, you've got to say, that's a fantastic viewpoint. The first day, of course, of the winter. If you're watching abroad, this is the first day of the uh, the Greenwich Mean Time, winter time in Britain. So we've got the early mornings and the sun coming down at 20 past four. The, the floodlights may be coming on, but it is a nice day, has to be said. The, uh, the, the, the sun hanging low in the sky, not much cloud. So we might even get away without the floodlights, which is a great coup for the organisers to get it all in in the daylight. So, uh, lovely pitch uh, postcard conditions here for the final round of British mini bikes here at Wilton Mill, Daventry in Northamptonshire. That's one of the upcoming events for them. Something new for the Alpha Live, and it's really been great to join the guys at Alpha Live this year for the mini bikes. Oh, there's problems on the line, number 52, our mystery rider from race one, just struggling to restart the bike, he's okay. And the flag drops, and away we go, and a great start there for Danny Underwood, Stuart Kay with him as well, but Underwood holds on into the first corner as the light starts to fade, you can see that late sunshine hanging over us as the, well, the train in the background on its way to Houston, one rider in trouble at the start, number 44, Adam Lovesy, with some mechanical trouble, he's just on the edge of the track, so, oh, the chain's come off. Oh dear. I can see from my window here That's the chain is uh, derailed, so... Now we should we should make it clear that whilst this isn't the last Stock 140 race, because there's another group to go after this, this is the last race for these riders uh, of the season. Unless I'm very much mistaken, but as far as I know, this is their last chance, so uh, that's not quite how that rider will have wanted it to finish. It's the number 44, which makes it Adam Loves, uh, Lovesy. He's still down there, actually. The marshal just... Yeah. The, the thing we've got, the, we should have the yellow... Yeah, wave yellows just to protect these riders. Yeah, the station absolutely. Rider. Marshal Post A so has uh, that. Hopefully, he's busy working on the bike. Let's hope he can get back in the race. Just do a few laps just to round things off. That would be nice for him. But yeah, but uh, across the line uh, on that lap, those who are running, Danny Underwood is your leader, ahead of James Nagy, Keir Armstrong and Stuart Kay. And, yes, mysterious rider 52 there, yep. uh, rounding out your top five. Update on the Junior SM uh, 140s uh, that I am going to say the jury's out because I haven't got, <laughs> I this haven't is got the... Uh, um, it's, it's, it's decided based on the number of wins. So, but I'm not, I've not got the number of wins here. Um, yeah, because we've only got the overall points. We've got the overall points for here on the track for 65 for the machine of Keir Armstrong in third. Getting it wrong by the boots, but gets back on the track. 
Uh, was that 65 or 66? Oh, no, it was uh, 65, I think he's... OK, no, no, you're absolutely now. right. Oh, Kieran Armstrong now dropping down the order. You're absolutely right, Chris. Apologies. And uh, four on number 44. He's pushing his bike back to the pits. Looks like he's out of the race, that's so not the way to finish off way. here. But he's but OK, of course, that's the main thing. Yeah, no, that's OK. And, and, and there are worse ways in which a chain could go. Oh, definitely, I yeah. think it's fair to say. Uh, I think there was a technical glitch on Chris. We saw a big giant pair of fingers going across the lens there. So <laughs> <laughs> it was on the camera, I think. Uh, indeed. But uh, Danny Underwood it is, who currently leads. Currently has the fastest lap of the race as well, 47.399. And look at this, challenge for second place. The oh, 52 going move. through at James Daggy. Nice move. Got good drive off the corner there. And he will score off. as second across the line. So James Daggy now down to third place. The thing is, on that final corner, when you make a pass down the inside going into the corner, you're naturally going to run wide onto the onto the tarmac. And it's so easy for the guy you're battling with to come back down on the inside, because you really do have to hang on there into the first corner. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, yes, the 52 will now set about uh, catching Danny Underwood and has put down... Uh, thrown down the gauntlet with a 46.516 lap time fastest lap of the race so far so this one isn't over yet by any stretch of the imagination and indeed uh, here we are with We're our two leaders oh. so again gets good drive off uh, off the latter part of the boot there does the number 52 he's lining him up isn't yeah. that this is going to be interesting to see how he just works this pass that's three corners in the making he's lining him up going into christmas corner Gets the drive on Underwood and very easily job done. Now that was a move, like we were saying earlier, sometimes these passes into Christmas corner, they take place from the last corner, don't they? Yeah, yeah. And what, what that also can result in is that uh, the move can be done mm. by Christmas corner because uh, you could just tell the, the, the entrance into turn one, into oblivion, as the corner <laughs> is called. Uh, you could see the intent of the rider there pulling out as far as he dare uh, on, onto the widest part of the racing line to really get the uh, the cut back a across the apex of turns one and two. So you can you could see the intent there in the rider, but Danny Underwood not going to let uh, him get away with that away with it without a fight indeed. Uh, and James Daggy is still part of this. He's on Make no mistake it. about it. And even Stuart Kane fourth. He's tagging on the back there as well. So uh, halfway through this pit bike stock 140 Group B race, it's still far from over with uh, mystery rider number 52 leading the way Danny Underwood in second position number 93 James Nagy the rider with the the white leathers and helmet not too far behind in third position there you just see shadowing there in fourth place is Stuart Cave at 52 great ride for him so far and the camera's giving you an idea now it's starting to get a bit darker now. I think we have passed the sunset by the looks of things so we might be seeing the floodlights of the final race yeah, I am somewhat surprised they were allowed to uh, have tinted visors still in this race actually but uh to be fair, there is still uh, sunlight just, just about. It's, it's hanging low now, isn't it? But it's just seeing the thing we may be coming up to sunset. I'm looking at see when the floodlights will, or if they'll go on, of course, because it's uh, not too long left in the day. Got to keep an eye, though, here on the battle over second place because James Nagy has caught up to the back of Danny Underwood. Here they are coming through Inkermans. Just to be absolutely clear, you may have seen the number 12 on Nagy's bike and then on timing he's showing up as number 11, but that is definitely uh, Nagy as we look further back at the battle over. He said, is this sixth place? Is this the battle? I think that's about sixth position. Yeah, that's 192, the machine of Connor Winters in fifth place, 23 Chris Edwards. And James Lewis in there as well in seventh place. They're coming towards the final corner. Uh, around the last corner he goes 192 Connor Winters looking strong as he crosses the line three laps to go in this race and still your mystery rider we'll try and confirm the name very shortly number 52 is leading the race and starting to pick his way through some of the slower riders as they make their way through Zulu this is a great battle though on the edge of sixth place with uh, Connor Winters holding on Chris Edwards and James Lewis the good thing is of course Howard that uh, as we say, with respect, of course, you don't get the impression sometimes, with, unless you're here in person, of how steep it is that run into Christmas Corner. And it is difficult to get that apex right when you're under braking. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And uh, if you get it wrong, uh, it's... Um, well, I suppose actually it is a somewhat forgiving corner because uh, it, it's on camber rather than off camber <laughs> like turn two. But uh, no, it is a difficult one. And of course, you've then got the transition to going immediately downhill somewhat on the exit. Uh, and then positioning yourself again for the left oh, hand. Oh, look at this. King, this is look at this Stuart move Kay. here. Stuart Kay taking second position from James Nagy. And 
Yeah, it looks uh, like he's made the pass stick. And absolutely. Um, Underwood dropping to fourth, and it's starting to put the pressure yeah. back. Are we having a timing issue think. with Underwood here? Because he's dropping down the times, but that looks very much... Yeah, one would presume that is him, isn't it? Sometimes these transponders, perhaps they get yeah. low on charge, possibly. Won't be a yeah, indeed. Match of that, but, maybe. Uh, that's definitely Underwood there on the tail of Nagy. One lap to go for 52, the race leader. Oh, he looks down the Looked at it, didn't he? <laughs> uh, as, as indeed, as you say, Chris, we are on the last lap. So this is the final lap, not just of the day, but of the year for these riders. And they'll be looking to, uh, we'll put it this way, Underwood doesn't want this one to be the one that got away, that's for sure. Oh, he has a look into Christmas there. Corner. But it's nothing on there. How about Inkermans? He's tagging him in there, isn't he? Just staying on that back wheel, just sussing him out. He's just going to try and find an opening. Any oh, he had a look there going through to Zulu, didn't he? But uh, looks like Nagy had the line covered. Absolutely. Meanwhile, we are going to have to look ahead to our, our leader, whom... Well, there he is. We uh, One of our guest riders, clearly, we are still unable to identify, but he's had a fantastic day. He's named Tommy, I'm going to say, because it says it on his suit. So Tommy in the there 52, uh, fantastic ride there. Stuart Kay takes a well-deserved second place. James Nagy was able to hold on for third as uh, we see Connor Winters coming round to take fourth. They won't hear this, of course, but shout out to some of these spectators down by us. Who must yes. I think they were cheering on to Stuart Kay went through. They're walking back yep. to the pits now and they were very vocal when he went through. Yeah, that's what we like to see, the Love support it. out there. Uh, you, you do see it as, well as a rider when people are getting behind. Oh, yeah, you, you notice you these it. things. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely.